This segment brought to you by Heinen Brothers Ag. Farmers helping farmers by offering quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia. Call today to protect your crop yield. Thanks for staying with us. Next, Sarah discusses sugarcane aphids and the importance of scouting your fields early and often for them. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer from Great Bend. I have the opportunity to visit with Sarah Zukoff. She's an entomologist with Kansas State. Sarah, in the last year specifically, and two years in particular, we have a new pest, especially with sorghum producers, called sugarcane aphid. Where did it come from and why is it such a problem? Well, the sugarcane aphid originated somewhere down, we think, in Mexico and Central America, that area. We're not entirely sure where these came from, um, but they did move from sugarcane on to sorghum. Uh, so now there's a population on sugarcane still, and there's this population on sorghum. They're, they're two separate populations. And so the population we got here in Kansas ended up coming from Mexico and Texas northward, northward to Oklahoma and then Kansas. That great south wind, I assume, brought them. Yes, indeed, yeah. it did. Mm -hmm. Well, and I know there was producers in south central Kansas, specifically in Sedgwick County and south and west of there, that was, were really hurt hard last year. Yes, South Central Kansas was the worst, um, but we did have them all the way up until one county away from Nebraska. We got them all the way into Colorado, too, um, and they ended up in Missouri as well. So they really spread far and wide this year in Kansas, um, way farther than in 2014. I understand that time is of the essence when you do get an infection, and so scouting is very important. Yes, we are telling everybody to scout early and scout often uh, because these aphids show up. They can show up overnight if a flight comes in um, and they could be there in very high numbers or very low numbers, but either way you need to monitor the situation. The key with saving your sorghum field when you get these aphids is to monitor because if you have about um, 20 to 30 percent of your plants that are having any type of populations that are having noticeable honeydew being produced, it's time to treat. And so that's something that Kansas producers need to keep in mind. Well, the population can explode, but the other thing is, is the damage can be significant. Early on, uh, I had thought that it was just a harvesting issue, but it's much more than that. Yes, it is a harvesting issue, um, but they do actually, you know, suck on the plant and, and have uh, damage they do physically to the plant. It's not as bad as what they do um, honeydew wise because they produce copious amounts of honeydew and their honeydew is their excretion. And it's very sticky substance um, and it is just kind of coats the plant. And also in some areas we'll have sooty mold. Sooty mold will come in and actually congregate on top of the uh, aphid honeydew and will cause additional problems with photosynthesis um, and some other problems. So we're still quantifying what kind of damage we're looking at by the physical aspect of the aphid as well as the honeydew um, and the sooty mold but we know definitely it makes harvest difficult when you have a lot of them. I know there are some chemicals available but one of the things that I've heard over and over is that you have to have large quantities of water. Yeah coverage is very critical with these aphids. Um, we're looking at in Kansas we only have uh, Savanto um, and that's by Bayer, and that is the only chemical that's registered for sorghum for sugarcane aphid, and it's the only thing that really is working very well um, that we're able to use. Now, we are looking at potentially getting a Section 3 or Section 18 for Transform, which is by Dow, um, and so we're hopeful about that because we don't want only one mode of action, we want multiple, <laughs> so we don't end up with resistance really fast. So uh, everybody just needs to keep an eye out for what chemicals we have available, but right now it's only Savanto. We're visiting with Sarah Zukoff. She's an entomologist with Kansas State University. This is Kyle Bauer reporting from Great Bend. Thanks, Kyle. Stay with us after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. 